I offer my congratulations and those of the Scottish Green Party to Nicola Sturgeon on her re-election as First Minister. It is a remarkable achievement to be returned for a fourth term, 14 years after the SNP entered government and more than six years after Nicola Sturgeon herself first became First Minister. To be returned with the second highest tally of seats at any election since devolution demonstrates that whatever differences we have, the First Minister personally retains the confidence of the bulk of the country. I look across this debating chamber, presiding officer, and what I see is hope. I see Scotland's most diverse parliament coming together in this room at this most critical of times. I see more young people, more women, more disabled people, more people with diverse backgrounds and experiences. I am particularly moved that in this term of parliament we have crossed what I consider to be a key threshold for culture change within an institution in that more than 40% of our MSPs are now women. 45% actually. I congratulate all those parties who have worked hard to improve their gender balance in order to bring in this fresh talent and these new perspectives. This is important because when we change who is making decisions, we change outcomes. Will we, as a more diverse group, have a more positive working culture? Will there be more cross-party working on matters such as a national care service, housing, education, and tackling the climate and nature emergencies? Will we be able to think long-term, to think about the well-being of our people and stewardship of our land and resources, rather than allowing exploitation and extraction? I have hope, presiding officer, because these are challenging times. The climate emergency requires this government and this parliament to take bold, transformative action. The pandemic requires a commitment to investment and rebuilding. The majority of pro-independence MSPs returned to this parliament means that we need to have a national conversation about the constitution and what kind of country we want to be. Do we want to be welcoming to refugees? Do we want to be a world leader in renewable energy and have town and city centers that are designed for people rather than cars? Do we want blood sports on our hills or sustainable agriculture and forestry? I have hope, presiding officer, because the people of Scotland did vote like their future depended on it in this election, returning rec voting in record numbers for the Scottish Greens and returning the largest ever number of Green MSPs. The people have asked for practical, life-changing policies, new jobs in renewable energy, warm homes, upgraded railways, stronger links to Europe. We can take many of these steps now without waiting for independence. But completing the necessary transformation must also involve asking the people of Scotland to choose their own future and building the case for independence, which is based on transformation, on building the Scotland we want to see, a fair and green Scotland that is in charge of its own destiny. We can invest in jobs and the economic recovery, reduction of carbon emissions, and improve the quality of life for everyone in Scotland. We just have to choose to do so. We, us, the people in this room. Presiding officer, I am hoping that the First Minister and everyone in this room will consider the nature of the multiple crises that we face and will commit to working in the spirit of cooperation and constructively across party lines to make the kind of transformative changes that are needed to protect our environment and ensure an economy that works for everyone.